coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers. Rotor X Rotorway Community seeks answers from Troubled Company. Mosaic comment period extended another 90 days. Vans issues new communique pertaining to laser cut parts. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our new programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sportplane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Rotor X Rotorway Community seeks answers from Troubled Company. A couple years ago, new ownership bought the Rotorway helicopter kit operation and rebranded it as Rotor X. Over the course of many months, numerous comments were received about Rotorex, with reports of dozens of customers who claimed to have bought helicopter kits or subkits not having gotten what they paid for. Some had paid in full, with amounts exceeding well in excess of $100,000, and received little or nothing in return. Others have received parts of their kits, with few reporting having received the more expensive or complex parts of the assemblies, with the engines being AWOL in virtually every report. Many report asking for and demanding refunds, but few have reported any degree of success in obtaining them. Most recently, reports escalated with complaints about skilled personnel leaving the company after long periods of non-payment. Rotorex boss Don Shaw has finally admitted that the company was in poor financial shape, that many customers were owed parts or kits, and the much-lauded 180-horsepower turbocharged engine that had been promoted heavily for the last year or so is not yet complete. Shaw claims that investors were expected to become involved in the company within days. However, according to many in the Rotorway community, this is a refrain they have heard several times before. Our investigations continue as the situation gets stranger the more we look. Coming up after the break, Vertical Aviation Technologies encourages comments to Mosaic and PRM. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows, actually. So ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Vertical Aviation Technologies encourages comments to Mosaic and PRM. Vertical Aviation Technologies' Brad Clark has high hopes for some changes to the FAA's forthcoming Mosaic-inspired FARs. Quote, the FAA has recently released an NPRM called Mosaic. It is a change to the LSA category and now includes helicopters. However, the FAA is proposing that LSA helicopters be two-seat only. The FAA is also proposing that light sport pilots can only fly two-seat light sport helicopters with simplified flight controls. If this NPRM is changed to four seats, then our hummingbird would be eligible as an LSA helicopter, end quote. He urges comments be made by the deadline. EAA Chapter 579 reaches Young Eagles Milestone For the last three decades, EAA Chapter 579 has been among the most active in the association's Young Eagles program. On September 23rd, the Aurora, Illinois-based chapter surpassed 20,000 Young Eagles flown, thereby becoming the first EAA chapter to reach the mark. The Young Eagles rally during which the record-setting flight was made was attended by Tim Donke and Chris Gauger from the EAA's Oshkosh, Wisconsin headquarters. The pair presented Chapter 579 and its president, Mickick Bear, a plaque and banner commemorating the achievement. FAA to recognize Axe Vital as LSA the FAA may be set to recognize the Axe eVTOL as an LSA if rulemaking persists as it seems. Produced by UK-based Skyfly Technologies, the Axe is a carbon fiber, fixed tricycle undercarriage, two-passenger eVTOL, personal aircraft, available in all-electric and hybrid-electric propulsion architectures. 
The Axis All Electric iteration manages a cruise speed of 86 knots and a range of 86 nautical miles. The hybrid electric version, while maintaining the same maximum forward speed, boasts an advertised range of 173 nautical miles. EAA comments on LOTA and PRM EAA and Warbirds of America have filed joint comments germane to an NPRM codifying new rules for flight training in experimental, limited, and primary category aircraft. The FAA contends the NPRM is intended to re-establish the status quo prior to a June 2021 court ruling that upended long-standing policy pertaining to flight training in the aforementioned aircraft. The ruling gave rise to a regulatory environment in which owners of experimental aircraft were required to secure LOTAs to train in their own aircraft. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Mosaic comment period extended another 90 days. As expected, the FAA extended the comment period 90 days for its NPRM titled Modernization of Special Airworthiness Certification that was published July 24, 2023. In the document, the FAA proposed to amend rules for the manufacture, certification, operation, maintenance, and alteration of light sport aircraft. The proposal claims to enable enhancements in safety and performance and increase privileges under a number of sport pilot and light sport aircraft rules. These enhancements include increasing suitability for flight training, limited aerial work, and personal travel. The comment period for the NPRM published July 24, 2023 at 88 FR 47650 and scheduled to close October 23, 2023 is now extended to January 22, 2024. The impetus behind many of the delay requests center around concerns expressed by AEA, ARSA, ASA, the Aviation Technician Education Council, HAI, International Air Response Inc., Modification and Replacement Parts Association, and the NATA. AEA notes that the primary purpose of the Mosaic proposal, as indicated by the NPRM and numerous news articles, is to expand the aircraft that may be eligible for future certification as light sport aircraft and to expand the authority and opportunity for sport pilots. However, what has not been discussed is that the proposal amends nine separate regulations, including definitions, certification standards, maintenance standards, airman certification, operating rules, and the certification of commercial operators. After these messages, Vans issues new communique pertaining to laser cut parts. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. Vans issues new communique pertaining to laser cut parts. Vans Aircraft has published new and updated documents for customers in possession of aircraft kits comprising laser cut parts. The described customers were to have received an email containing a link to a newly established web portal via which they may select requested replacement parts. Vans has also made available to its customers a series of online documents, including a new engineering assessment report the company encourages its customers to read in full. Subject report describes the work Vans have done and the results of testing and assessment performed by the company's engineering team and a contracted third-party testing company. All laser cut parts have been classified either as recommended for replacement or acceptable for use. Those parts classified as acceptable for use are functionally equivalent to punched parts and may be used in an aircraft. Any parts classified as recommended for replacement should be replaced or addressed as discussed in the engineering assessment document. The status of each part is displayed in the updated laser cut parts list document as well as the new web portal's parts list. 
A detailed review of documentation included with kits shipped to customers revealed upwards of 1,000 instances in which vans erroneously informed customers their kits might contain laser-cut parts. In fact, the kits in question did not contain laser-cut parts. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.